Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, we're into October and that means we have a new monthly prompt for the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And the prompt for this month is Paper Mania. And for the week one challenge, we are calling it magazine art. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different. There's lots of scope for different projects relating to magazine art, but I'm just going to show you a bit here of, of what I'm going to do. So I've just grabbed three basic magazines and I'm going to go through these and show you the types of things that I might pick out. So I'm going to speed this up a bit. This is a newspaper supplement. So I'm looking through here. There's a few focal images that would be quite good to use in magazine art, but not an awful lot in this one. There's the odd thing. I'll show you one thing in a moment, which is, uh, yeah, look, look at the detail in that. That would make some wonderful magazine art. I'm not going to use that today, but Another type of magazine might be one of those that you pick up at the supermarket. Sometimes there can be some quite good images in here. Not always, there wasn't a lot in that one today. Now looking at this magazine that I picked up recently. And again, there's a few focal images in here that might be quite good. But I've just picked out a few pages of the things that were kind of catching my attention. So just showing you that page there. Wonderful colour on it. Uh, this one, looking at some of what's on here, but one of the things that attracts me about magazines is not necessarily the big focal images, but some of the smaller detail, and that's what I'm looking at here. So there is an interesting photo of sea and of rocks, and I actually like the kind of pattern that's within that. So my idea for this week is to make what I'm calling an artist book with some pieces of the background of those images. So not picking out the main focal points, but actually picking some detail. Now I liked this back page. There was two images there. Didn't particularly like the feet, but I liked the colour and the blurriness and that bit at the bottom. And I was thinking those might be quite good as the front and back covers of my artist book that I'm going to make. However, I do slightly change my mind. I'm going to take a piece of this Arteza 180 GSM paper, just from my uh, big pad here. And I'm actually going to cut a bit off. I'm going to make this book about seven centimetres by seven centimetres. So the idea is that I'm going to make it a concertina book. So I've cut a strip seven centimetres and what I've done now is I'm just checking that I can actually, that this will work out and I'm just, I put a centre fold in it and I'm now marking from the centre at seven and fourteen and I'll do that on the other page as well. I'm then just folding it over, you know, this is the sort of thing if you had a scoreboard you could score the lines in, but I'm just using my ruler to fold it over and I'll then use the bone folder to get a nice crisp line in place. So quite a small book, but that's because I wanted to focus on some of the, the kind of detail of the images that I'm going to use. So you see there, just folding it up as a concertina and then I will actually take the bone folder and put a crisper line in place now that I know that I've got it all the right size. So I, I really enjoy making artist books. So this isn't a journal. It's not something that I'll go back and write in. I am making this as a complete piece of art in its own right. So now that I've got that, I will start to look in a bit more detail at the images that I want to use. I was trying to decide whether I wanted to make the images slightly smaller than the 7x7, seven seven, but in the end, I do make them 7x7. Seven seven. Now, I'm putting those two to the side because as much as I liked them, I realised that all the other images that I'd pulled out had a, a nature feel to them, and that gave me a further idea 
for the book. So I'm looking at all of these and looking at where I want to take pieces from. And of course, they'll look quite different when they're in the book because it is just a small section of it. But the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to take off that rough edge to begin with, start with a nice straight edge, and then I'm just going to look at where I want to kind of take my 7x7 seven seven from. So just marking 7cm top and bottom, just so I can really just tear a strip off. And what I'm going to do with my book is I'm going to put an image back and front so that the book will be continuous. When you get to the end, you then just flip it over and see what's on the other side. So just marking that out and all I'm doing is tearing with the ruler. The edges will be slightly uneven but that's exactly what I want because I do want later on in the process to age this a little bit. So you'll see there that I'm starting to, to make the pages and that's more or less going to fit. So I'll have it back and I'll have the other one on the front. And I'll now cut out from my other pages. So I've now got them all cut out and you see that it starts to look a little bit different. Now what I'm going to do is work out the order that I want them to go into my little book. And of course I've got for example, two pieces of the tree. So I don't want them next to each other. And I'm going to put them more or less at opposite ends of the book. And I'm trying to get here something where there'll be a little bit of difference between the images when they sit side by side. So I'm going to try, for example, not to have two colours exactly the same realise there that I think I've lost one. There we go. Two were sticking together. And just looking at whether or not that feels about right. Now I do start to wonder if I want the tree as a start or if I want one of those pieces that has the kind of sand and the, the waves coming up because they would also make a nice start for the book. So deciding whether I want it that way or in a moment you'll see that I kind of swap them and decide do I want them that way. In the end I go with the tree being at the beginning, so being really my kind of front page. Obviously that's all something that's very much down to individual preference. So I've decided that I've got my order. And what I'm going to do is take a quote from John Muir. Now, many of you will know of John Muir as being the person behind the kind of national parks in the US, but uh, John Muir is actually a Scot and was born just a few miles along the road from where I am. So. Uh, I love his words, uh, his work was amazing and therefore this also has a bit of a kind of resonance with me in more ways than one. So all I'm doing is using a glue stick and I'm going to glue my pages down and into place. Now the fact that it's a glue stick, it allows me just to move it a little bit you know, there's a little bit of uh, time to adjust it if I don't get it right in place. Now, I'm not too worried if there's any little gaps at the edges because I will be inking this up on the edges. And I'm just going to work my way along here. Just as I say, using the glue stick, 
and then just using the bone folder to get it down and to get it into place. And once I've completed that side, I'll simply flip it over and start on the next row. And I'll follow the exact same process. So again, on this side, it will start with the tree. And I'll just follow that through right to the end. So, putting my last image in place on this side. And there we have the basis of it. So what I'm going to do now is to... I've, I've arranged the words of the quote in a way that will fit with the images that I have, both in terms of... I don't want too many words on one single page, but I also want it to flow from image to image. So I'm just going to tear these down into single lines. And in some instances, I'll take a line and separate the words out. So now I'm just going to start to place them onto the images because I want to see how they will actually fit. And there you see I've worked that out. So just moving them about because again I don't want them to be in the exact same place every time. Uh, I want the eye to travel kind of up and down the photographs, the, the images. So that it's not a case of just following the words, it is actually a case of looking at the image. So there you see I'm splitting that one up, it just felt too heavy as one block of words, so just splitting those a little bit. And I'm not going to ink round the actual words, but what I will do now is to start to stick them down. And again, I'm just going to simply use my glue stick to put them in place. I did think about using uh, a kind of wet glue to put the images down, but decided that actually the glue stick would be better be because the paper was quite thin. So I've now moved on to the other side and just doing the exact same on this side. So just looking through, making sure that I've got the words in the right order and you know, once you get to the end of the second side, it brings you naturally back to the first side. So I do want to give this a bit of an aged effect now. I want it almost to look like old photographs. So I'm starting with this VersaFine sepia ink. And you'll see here that what I'm going to do, I'm just testing it out on this paper because I want to see how it reacts with the paper. That was just a bit from the magazine. And you'll see that what I do to begin with, I take my ruler and I'm going to place that along the edge because I really want to get a good coating on the edge of the white paper. But what I'll do is once I've gone round all the edges, I do then want to bring some of the ink down and onto the image itself. So you can see there I've gone right round the edges. What I also want to do is to go down in between each of the photographs. I'm going to darken up that outside line now just by going around the very edge of it and just catching the edge of the white paper. So that just darkens up the outer edge as well. Now that I've done that, I will go along in between the images and I just do that by folding the page. Now what I will do is, once this is complete, I will actually put the book in place, I'll fold it and I will put it under a heavy book just to make sure that all the images are fully down and in place. 
Now I'm just going to take my brush again and I'm just going to start to bring some of that ink down and on to each of the images. So just starting to give them more of a distressed and aged look. As I say, kind of making it a little bit like old photographs. And there we have it. And I've simply tied it with a piece of twine for the time being. So my book is round about two and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches, which is seven centimetres by seven centimetres. And I'm just going to do a little flip through of it. And I do like the simplicity of the piece of twine around it. Nature is ever at work, building and pulling down, creating and destroying, keeping everything whirling and flowing, allowing no rest, but in rhythmical motion, chasing everything in endless song, out of one beautiful form into another. John Muir. So I do hope you enjoyed seeing me create this little artist book and just looking perhaps at magazines and images within magazines in a slightly different way. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what you come up with with this week's prompt for our monthly challenge of Paper Mania. Nina will have a video this week so I'll leave a link to that below and I'll also leave a link to the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. So as always, take care, stay safe and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.